Hello and welcome to another explosive tutorial video for Thinking Particles. In this video, we will explore how we can create some amazing water bomb effects. This video is a continuation of our other video, we already have released that, which talked about creating dust explosions or sand explosion effects. Now we want to create with the same tool, water explosions. Keep in mind that our explosion tool will be part of our new release of Thinking Particles and we're still developing this explosion tool. So if you have feedback, leave some comments. We read every comment. If you uh, want to tell us what functions or features you want or what uh, aspects of the explosion tool you think would be useful to control, just leave a comment. We love all your comments and ideas. And we will try, obviously, to implement that before we release that. So before we dive into uh, 3D Studio Max and um, how to set up this kind of effects, I would like to remind you to press the like and subscribe button. Also, check the bell icon so that you can get information or a notice whenever we have a new video out. And also it helps us a lot growing this channel and bring out more of these tutorial videos. So thank you for that. And now let's dive right into the 3D Studio Max setup. For that, I will now switch to my full screen 3D Studio Max monitor. And we are now going to explore this scene. First, let me start with um, showing you the scene and what the setup is. So what we have here right now is the scene where we have a background image and that's uh, tracking. So I did some uh, really uh, fast and cheap tracking of the background and we have a plane. Let me just um, switch to the um, shaded view and here we can see that we have our plane. Now when I move our frame slider we can see the plane is tracked along with the environment and we want to have things happen on that plane. So on that plane uh, the idea is, let me just go to wireframe, the idea is to actually have these effect dropping little meteorites or whatever is dropping into the water and creating some splashes and explosions. So the first thing we are going to do is create some uh, meteors that are raining down. Similar to the very first tutorial that created the dust explosion where this one large meteor hits the ground. Now we want to have multiple impacts. That would be really cool. And obviously we don't want to have every impact look the same. So we need to find a solution or a little bit uh, a trick of how we can uh, create a variation of an explosion, but without the overhead of doing each time the same simulation, a uh, different simulation, excuse me. Let me uh, go back to the scene setup. So we have this uh, dummy helper, it's an arrow pointing down. And I want to use this arrow to direct an art direct or however you want to call it to direct my meteorites in a certain uh, direction because when we look at the footage let me just do that full screen the camera is moving the ship is moving obviously so we have uh, different parts of the image uh, leaving the uh, frame we can uh, see so we need to be able to somehow adjust our meteorites because we don't want to have everywhere explosions or water bombs. So what we need to do is somehow control where we spray our uh, meteorites. So this is the arrow object. I will use that to direct my particle stream or the meteorites. Then we have the camera, obviously for the tracking in this scene. Then we have a setup for our volumetric effects. The volumetric effects are very important and those volumetric effects, they create the uh, actual water splashes or water bombs effects. And then we have light, the ocean surface we use here, and we also have our thinking particles and the tracking information as well. 
I'll say, let's dive right now into thinking politics and create our meteorites hitting the ground. Let me do that here. And probably we would start with our create dynamic set. And in the create dynamic set, we would just uh, do um, the particle creation. And we do that by, I'll press the tab key that brings up the list of operators we have. I'm looking for a position born, use a position born operator. And the position born operator goes into my uh, particles, uh, particle groups. And the particle groups are called meteors. How about that? The position born I would choose the meteors as my particle group. So I'll born all the particles in my meteors group. And I will use particles per second because I don't want to have too many particles falling down. I just want some distinct uh, particle uh, impacts. And then I would just say, we want to have a lifespan probably for 100 frames because I want to hit the ground for sure. Because of the scale, I want a speed of around 5,000. And then uh, the particles will go down. I want to make it a little bit narrow, the particles where they emit it. And then for the particle size, I would say let's just do 200 so that we can see something um, for our particle size. And I'll give them a variation of 50. Keep in mind, those particles are our little meteorites hitting the water surface. So that's the idea. This is why I'll give these a size and a variation in the size. And then probably we want to have some randomness. And I'll already found a nice start uh, seed for my random. So I'll just use that. And the next thing I want to do is, and I talked about that, let me just move that out of the way. We have this arrow here and this arrow, we are going to use that. And how do we get objects into uh, um, thinking particles? We are going to use a node tool, a node helper. And the node helper will give me the position. So I can use the position from my node helper. And for that, I just have to pick my node. So I just say, okay, I'll pick that. So what happens now is the position born will use the position from our arrow. This is good. But I also said, I want to use the direction of the arrow. So I want to make sure that my particles fly into uh, the correct or right direction. So what I want to specify for sure is the direction of my particles. And then I also need to get the direction. So how do we get the direction? We can't really use the alignment of our node as a direction. We want to have a direction vector. So where's the arrow pointing to? So we have a special a node that is called get direction. And this node is really useful. It allows you to get a direction from an alignment. So you can feed in any alignment you have from a particle or object. In this case, we have a real 3D Studio Max object and I'll get the direction. So I'll use the Z direction and that should give me the direction the arrow is pointing to. So now what we have, let me just go here and check out if we can already see some particles flying down and we already can see particles are flying down. Also here we can see. So particles, let me just go here, are spraying down onto our surface. So the first step is done. The next thing I want to do is assign a shape because these should be um, little meteorites. So let me just um, assign a shape and we have uh, an operator called standard shape, which allows you to uh, create or assign a standard shape to any particle. So you just have to feed in the particle. So the newly born particle will uh, get this shape. And for that, I'll just use a tet tetra cube that looks like a meteorite, like a mini meteorite. 
So that's my uh, shape I want to assign. And now what we want is have a look at our object probably. So what we are going to do is I'll switch to my master dynamics. Let me just, just move back so that you see and know what I'm doing here. So I'll select the master dynamics set here, and this will give me access to the visualization tools. So what we are doing here is we can allow or show the mesh of the object. So when we now restart our visualization, we should see our little meteorites here. So we can see them here. Here we go. Here we have our little meteorites. So these are our little objects that are falling down from the sky. Let me just move back. So now we have these little meteorites dropping down from the sky. And the next thing we want to do, and that was similar or is similar like the effect we did in the dust explosion is, we want to make sure when we hit the surface, our plane, our ocean tracking plane, let me just move that. That's our ocean surface here. When we hit the surface, we want to make sure that we create our explosion or water bomb effect or splash effect. So let's just do the water bomb splash effect on impact. So what we need to do for our explosion tool, and I'll just bring up the explosion tool. In this video, I will not go so deep into the explosion tool. I will uh, show up the settings and all this, but if you're more interested in uh, what's the idea behind it and how, how it works, check out our other video with the dust explosion. So our explosion tool is already set up and it needs the positions as the main driver. So the explosion tool needs just a position in space and it will create an explosion there and all our setup, our system will create an explosion for us automatically. So how do we get the positions? What we need to do now is actually, we need to go into our simulation and we are going to actually create another effect. Let me just uh, move something here. Um, what we first will do is we grab the meteors. So all of our meteors, because we have to do some testing on the meteors. So if when the meteor hits the surface, we want to do something. So we'll grab the meteors that are flying there. So we will feed the meteors into our collision detection. And that's uh, our universal deflector. So I'll just get the universal deflector node or the U deflector node. And as an input, the U deflector node needs something to collide with. So again, we have to grab a node helper. I'll grab a node helper and connect the node. And now we need to pick our collision object. And this is our ocean surface. So the little plane we have there, we want to collide with that. And the next thing is we want to have a collision between the meteors and our ocean surface. So that's the setup we have here. Now we get uh, collisions. And the next step would be what happens after that. So if we get a collision, what do we want to do? So the first thing is I don't want to have any bounds or anything. And I'm only interested in the event. So only the collision counts. I don't want to do any fancy stuff or visual effects. I just want the event of the collision. And then I will react to it. So the next thing I said is we need to create position particles for our explosion tool. So the next thing is also easy, same deal. I'll get another position born operator. And this is my position of the where the collision happens. So I feed in the collision. But it could be that there's many self collisions and hundreds of collisions and so on. So I want to make sure that I only activate my particle born position born when there's actually a collision happening. 
So I just make sure this works. And then we need to make sure that the particles we uh, birth now or that are born now are going into the positions particle group. And then I want to make sure that this only happens one particle per call. So I'll create one particle per call. And uh, this will allow me to just create particle collides, one particle is born, and that's our position particle. The lifespan of this position does not be, doesn't really matter that much as long as we get our position over to our explosion tool. So I'll just do a lifespan of two, uh, two frames, and we don't want any speed. Um, we want probably a size to start with. That would be our initial uh, explosion size. And um, that's about it. I think that's all what we want. So now we would get hopefully at each impact point, let me just play back. We already have done it. At each impact point, we will get now our water splash explosion. Isn't that cool? So easy. However, I can see already some issues. So the uh, meteorites, they keep on flying. That might not play any role at all, or it give us a headache because we see something in the frame we don't want to see. So I better make sure on collision, I want to kill the meteorites because they're just vaporized. So let's do that. How would we do that? So how can we kill how can we kill the particles on collision? Very simple as well. In thinking particles, we have a particle die operator. So I just type in die. Same deal as always. I press the tab key, get a list of operators, type in the particle die. So now I want to kill this particle. But now we have to be careful. If I would keep it as is, it would kill our particles right when they are born. They should only be killed when the collision happens. So I'll connect the collide here. And probably it would be a good idea to have the particles maybe survive one frame so that we still get uh, some sinking in uh, action or visualization. Um, so after one frame, we just kill the meteorite. So let's see if that actually works as I told you, because I could tell you a lot of stuff and might not be right. So let's just see if it works. We can see meteorite and it's killed. So meteorites hit the surface. Let me just go there. One frame and they're killed. Done. So now we have this out of the way. So we have this out of the way. There is one thing I really don't like right now. Let, let me just go probably from this viewport. All our explosions are identical right now. They have the same size. And I don't like that. Uh, have a look here in our tracked camera background. So one explosion, another explosion. So they are all pointing up to the sky and they are all the same size. That's not realistic. I want some variation. Meteorites have different speed, different size, different mass, whatever. So how do we get this variation? And here comes a really, really cool thing. And we did not talk about it in our other dust explosion video. Our explosion tool, and just a reminder, we're still working on it. It will change a lot. But for now, our explosion tool takes all the information a particle has, the position particle. So we grab all the information it has, including the size. So what does that mean? Size means it controls your explosion size. So now we have an easy, so dead simple tool to control our splash size. So I'll just go back into our position board. So keep in mind, this is the particle we create for the position for our explosion tool. 
So I'm just going in and tell probably how about a variation of 100%. So now I have small, big explosions just by putting a variation to my size on the position particle. Let's have a look now. Let me just go there and have a look now. And now we can see right away, we have a variation of size. We have this really small splash here. We have a bigger splash. Let's see, a very big splash. Here's another one coming. So we have all kinds of variables. So let's see what this guy is creating. Ah, it's creating a smaller splash. So that's beautiful. That's exactly what I want. These natural variations, big and small explosions. However, there is still one thing that is bothering me. And I already mentioned it. They're all pointing upwards. That's not, uh, that doesn't look real. If all is just perfectly up to the sky because they come in at an angle and water would splash in all kinds of directions. So how can we solve that issue? How about we use another aspect of the particle? As I mentioned, our uh, particle system, sorry, let me just bring up our thinking particle system here. So our particle has more information than just the position and size. It also has the alignment in space. So how about we use the alignment from our meteors to control the alignment of our position particle. Then we can point our explosion in any direction we want. And once more, same deal like before, alignment we need to get the direction. So let me just grab the alignment of our meteor particle and same deal. Oops, we need to get uh, here our direction and we want to set the alignment of this particle. So I'll just get now an alignment node and this newly born position particle, I want to align it so I'll just feed in the C direction. That's my alignment. So what did I do here? Let me just move that a little bit closer so that we have all in the view here. So what did I do here? I grabbed the alignment from the meteors, get the direction. So how are the meteors flying? In which direction? Or how are these particles pointing? And then I'll set the alignment here. However, this means that our meteors need to be aligned as well. So when we shoot them, we need to align these meteors as well. We did not do that. Let's have a look here where we create the meteors. So we just create the meteors, apply a shape, but no alignment. So how about we do the same deal here? Use the alignment operator and we align this particle so now the question is, how should we align this particle? And the alignment operator has a really cool feature because we, I know we are all lazy. We want to have fast results. I just can select direction of travel. And because it's the Z direction and I want the water splashes pointing in the other direction, I'll just invert it here just for the ease of use because I'm right now in this uh, dynamic set. So now what we did is we create our meteor particles, shoot them along our arrow. You remember from the node here where we use the get direction from the alignment of the arrow. Then we create these meteor particles, shoot them down and assign a shape and an alignment. So we in travel direction. So they shoot down and they are aligned along this vector. So that's all I needed to do. And now in our simulation, I grab the alignment from the particle we did and align my position particle along this. And because I inverted the alignment, now we would get a splash in the opposite direction. 
So let's have a look if that actually works and gives us some different results. And I can already see we have different results here. So our splashes are now pointing in the opposite direction of the impact point. So now I have different variation in sizes, variation in directions of our uh, splashes in here. And that will give us these natural, cool looking water splash effects. That's actually all it is to create with our explosion tool, this kind of effects. We can have another look at our setup. So we did the creation of our meteorites here and the simulation with the uh, collision detection, creating the position particles, aligning them. And then all the heavy lifting, all the heavy lifting of our explosion, how it looks like, how does the splash look like, this spiky watery splash is created with this curve. Then we can even manage the distribution of water droplets and all kinds of stuff uh, we can create here. And in parallel, we will also create sand particles, which is from our dust explosion tutorial. So we need to rename this kind of uh, rollout to all kinds of extra particles we create to simulate our water effect or our water splash effect. So now we have everything here very simple, straightforward. So you drop in this uh, system and you're ready to go. All you need to supply, as I showed you, is just a position in space and you can create all kinds of explosion effects. Yeah. Kind of a second part of this video. We are now going to explore a little bit how we created the uh, volumetric effects in this uh, visual effect setup. So uh, um, let me just dive into what I did to get the volumetric effect going and what kind of tricks I used there and how our new tool, we are still developing our explosion tool, um, plays along. So let me just switch again to my full screen 3D Studio Max and same scene as before. Let's have a look at the uh, setup. I just want to show you how I created the volumetric effects here in this setup. And actually the great thing is I don't have to do anything. That's the beauty of it. In Thinking Particles, uh, we create our particles, put them in the particle groups. So we have the particle groups up here, the expansion groups, that's every particle that somehow explodes. And we have traces, debris and trails in there. We're not using them at all. We are just using the expansion tool um, as our main effects tool right now. And you see here, we have all these channels already prepared. However, we don't need them. I wanted to make this tutorial as easy as possible. And even that you can uh, recreate this tutorial with another product as well, with another particle system. So we are not going to use any of these um, thinking particle startup channels. However, I just want to mention that if you would use these data channels, you can control in detail for every single particle, how final fluid, our real time fire and smoke simulator um, behaves. And that's a real powerful thing. And I will uh, show you some uh, uh, effects done with um, final fluid, and then we can uh, just move on with our um, visual effect setup we have in here in this scene. So as I mentioned, there's no need to create anything in here special. We just create the particles. So everything we need is already there. So we just created that in our first part of this tutorial. So everything we need is there. We have the particles. We have two particle groups. Let me just uh, make sure you understand that again, we have the expansion particles and we have what we call here sand particles. That's as I already mentioned from our other tutorial where we did the dust explosion. Those are our water particles now. So the sand is becoming now water. And what we do down here in uh, to finally render is uh, add a surfacer. I'll, I'll just show you, we're not going 
too deep into the surface. We are using an open VDB shape to create a surface out of these particles in space, and that will give us something for the ray tracer to render our uh, water particles or water surface. But as I mentioned, we are, we are not going into rendering right now. We just want to concentrate on Final Fluid and how to create a real-time workflow in Final Fluid. We have here our Fluid Grid. And the Fluid Grid is, let me just bring that to full screen here. Um, that was the wrong viewport. Let's go here. And here we are. So that's our domain. Inside of this domain, everything, all the visualization of our volumetric effect will happen. And now you might think, oh, why is it so high? First, we have a fully uh, sparse grid solver. So sparse grid means it doesn't matter how big it is. It's not allocating anything except where our um, volumetric effects happening, where particles are and where we create some fog, dense smoke and fire and all these kind of things. Second, what we see here is not our volumetric effect because these are just the seeds for our volumetric effects. So we seed the positions where we want to have fuel, smoke, fire, in this case, water vapor, uh, foam, spray, and, and so on. So these particles just are seeds and the rest is done by the solver. So the fluid solver will produce all the whirls and fluid and pressure and all these kind of things. The next thing we have is besides our domain where everything happens, so we can have a look here. This is our domain where everything is happening. Inside here, we can create our volumetric effect. The next thing we need is an emitter. And I'm working here with a uh, fluid emitter. And the fluid emitter is set to particle. We could have our own emitter, just one sphere, just one capsule, one box, one plane. But we want to have our particles, our spray particles, or explosion particles. So the next thing uh, we want is we can specify which particles we want to use. So right now I'm using our expansion particles here for our uh, volumetric effect. So I select the expansion particle group in Thinking Particles. And now we're adjusting our particle emitters. We are setting some values and we're using the global settings for the uh, advection and all these other uh, effects. So how about, wouldn't it be cool if we could adjust all our look in real time? And yes, we can do that. I'm going to open now uh, the fluid grid uh, preview, the real time preview. And that real time preview was, I already cached the particles. I can do that later on if we want to adjust the particles, but right now, all our particles are all fine. So now we want to concentrate on our look of the volumetric effect. So that's where we start playing around with the real-time preview. And I'll open now our standard real-time preview to just have a first look or feeling about what's going on in here. And here we already can see we have now a more water-like uh, look or effect. So where we have these streams of water splashes coming out. And it's not more like a gasoline explosion effect or fire burning effect. It's more like um, a, a massive chunk shooting up in the air and leaving a spray or foam, water foam or spray uh, effect behind. So how do we do that? How do we adjust that? So some uh, important uh, effects we want to consider is our advection setting. Because we are not really doing a fire and flame simulation, we would usually not need any uh, fuel or burning. However, I want to have a subtle change in color of our uh, water splashes, or water effects. And this color variation, let me just bring up our color gradient is exactly what we want. So what I want is hot white foam as we have it down here. When I go here, you can see we have this white foam in the water. So when something hits with force, 
we have all these air, little tiny air bubbles there that refract and, and uh, reflect the light and it gets white. So I want that in the beginning. So whenever it's hot, in this case, I want this white foamy. And then after the foam, we see uh, individual droplets. So this darker color, and then we go back to that. So that would give me kind of the range I'm interested in seeing. And now I can start playing around with the fading behind these trails. So if I would just increase the fade, let's say to five, I would see that our smoke trails or water trails are now much, much shorter. And I, I would not get the real uh, look I'm after with the spray water. So I have a big chunk of water flying up and then it disintegrates in vapor. So I want that effect. So my fading, I'll set about 0.2 and then I get this nice uh, water vapor spray effect behind my chunks of water that are thrown up with our explosion tool. The next thing to notice is you see that I get this gravity look. That's also not typical for gasoline explosions. Usually fire moves up and expands, but I don't see that or don't have that. And how did I achieve that? So the first thing I did is I created a positive gravity value here, 600, and that takes care about pushing so to say the other way, I want to push down my uh, fire or smoke effect to simulate heavy water drops. So to simulate these heavy water droplets, I have these um, positive uh, gravity. If I were to go negative, for example, let me just turn that around, then we would have an explosion-like effect. So now we have a gasoline uh, napalm explosion effect. But we don't want that. I turn the gravity the other way around and that pushes down my spray water droplets to the ground. So when we have these trails, the water droplets will fall down, create the illusion of the spray uh, raining down on the water surface. And another value here is our buoyancy. And the buoyancy is kind of a multiplier. If I reduce the buoyancy to one, we won't see the effect so much. If I put it back to 100, the trails or the vapor behind the trails will already start sinking. So that's uh, one setting we have here. And as I mentioned, all the other settings we have here are non-typical explosion effects because we don't want to create hot fire explosions here. So that's the setup in our uh, grid. And now let's see if we did something in the emitter. And uh, keep in mind the emitter is our particle here, our thinking particles particle, the explosions here, or uh, expansion particles. And um, all I did here is create a lot of smoke at the beginning. And in this case, the smoke are my water droplets or water spray, fine vapor. And I born them with an instant temperature of one. And then I cool them down to get some gradient change in density of water droplets and color of water droplets. So that's a little uh, trick I use here. And then uh, I just create some fuel to get some lift or buoyancy working. And that's practically all I did here. Nothing uh, crazy or, or anything else. The next setting is based on my particle size, I can control the size of my effect. So if I would have the original particle size, then I would get very fine, thin details. That looks more like fireworks, I would say, or small, um, very tiny explosions. But I want to have the really massive, thick water effects. And then I can also maybe go a little bit extreme, but then we have way too extreme. So that doesn't look nice anymore. 
So I found that with 0.4, I have the look I'm after. That looks like these water, uh, water bomb explosions I'm after. So we could also control um, how big our effect is with the max active distance. So I could just double the max active distance, which would be uh, the same deal, much bigger. So, but that's more like uh, if you want to have a burning meteorite. So I'll I'll just uh, dial it back to my water type uh, water bomb explosion. Another important factor here is the motion inheritance. So I want to transfer the motion of the particle to my cells in the uh, fluid simulation. So if I were to increase that, let me just overdo the effect. You will see that we get a totally different look and it's more violent right now. So we can see it's way overdone with the transfer of the particle motion to the grid. So it all has to be in balance so that this uh, actually works as we want it. But that's practically all I did here is created my domain. That's our final fluid grid. And then created the emitter, set the emitter to particles. I chose the thinking particles, uh, particle group as we have here. And then we, I have my volumetric effect. However, when you watch closely, we can see that we have two types of particles. And let me just bring back our thinking particles here so that I just explain what I did here. Because as I mentioned, I have the open VDB shape as well. Let me just turn that on. This will now create a surface. Let me just drop that in and we'll zoom in. Let me just zoom in here to a surface. So what we create here now is an actual surface. Let me just go to a standard uh, performance. Oh, it's still like that. So what I'm creating here now is actual water droplets or chunks of water. I want to ray trace and render here to get these actual water splashes effects along with the volumetric effect. So let me just turn off the surface again um, and just move back into my frame here. And here we go. So what we have now is a combination of a mesh and volumetric effect. So right now, the mesh is inside of the volumetric effect. The volumetric effect is a little bit outside. So we get this nice mixture of water droplets, water vapor or foam, and actual physical refraction, reflection, all things going on so that we can see the actual splashes going on here. And let me just bring up, uh, I'm, I showed you the video already in, in the tutorial. However, let me just uh, bring up the video again. Um, let me just put that on uh, repeat and put that away. So here you can see the actual edges or borders of the effect create true geometry or splashes that have refraction reflection. So I could control all the um, colors and refraction and reflection things and illumination. So that's the idea behind it, having the mesh and the volumetric effect in one go, and that will create uh, our water bomb effects. So that concludes the whole tutorial of how to create a water bomb effect. And I hope you liked this uh, video and I could show you some really cool effects. Let me just switch back to my uh, main screen and I'm back here. So once again, thank you for watching this video. Let me just as a small reminder, please like and subscribe, click the bell button that helps us a lot and is really appreciated. Thank you so much. And please check out our other videos we have for Thinking Particles and Final Fluid. And we also offer a free Final Fluid version where you can use Final Fluid to create uh, your effects. 
try it out and, and see how it works for you. And then we offer a lot of tutorial videos for all of our products, the rendering, the visual effects tool, thinking particles, and our real-time fire effects tool. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hope to see you soon. Goodbye.